Connection. We're starting off our second week. This is uh, Nelly Deutsch, and uh, we're quite acquainted because um, we've been uh, responding. And uh, I have to give you a huge clap uh, to everyone for being so super, super active. It's been a very, very uh, <laughs> active week, and uh, my family knows about it because uh, I've been getting very, very little sleep. And uh, that's something to discuss because uh, it's so important, at least in the first week, to be able to learn about everybody. And when there are almost 400 participants in the actual Moodle for Teachers Moodle website and uh, a thousand and 50 on WizIQ, uh, altogether it's uh, over a thousand. There's a lot of uh, learning going on as uh, I learn about you. Now you only have to learn about maybe one other person, but that's the teacher's or the facilitator's role to get to know the students. So I have to read everything and I try to respond to everyone. I still have uh, a few people uh, that have joined to respond to. So uh, I want to get to know you. That's really, really important. So thank you. Thank you for making uh, this course, the Moodle for Teachers, EVO 14, so uh, very meaningful. All right, today's session is really important. It's actually the first one. Anyone who just started will find it useful. If you could just add in the chat box where you're from, feel free to use the chat box. It's for you. It's a way for you to keep talking uh, in class, even though uh, somebody else is talking. So the more you chat and relate to what you hear, the more you will uh, gain as far as um, I'm concerned. So feel free to keep chatting away. All right, so we're going to get started with what we'll do today. And then um, I hope Nancy, yeah, Nancy's here. Nancy's going to uh, lead on the resources and explain her experiences uh, with using resources. Ludmilla will also talk about how she uses the resources since uh, both Ludmilla and Nancy use Moodle in uh, their courses. One is a blended learning and the other one is fully online without any face-to-face -face communication. All right, so let's get started. Okay, a little bit about the facilitators. They're all here and they're all very, very active. You probably know Thomas. Is Thomas here? Thomas has been amazing. I don't know if Thomas got any sleep. I talk about a minimum of uh, two or three hours a night, but Thomas, is Thomas here? Thomas, if you could just say hello in the, yes, he is. Thomas, how much sleep do you get? I mean, this past week, <laughs> do you sleep? Uh, people ask me if I sleep, but I've never asked anybody else. But I think Thomas has really outdone me. Four hours, yeah. Yeah, Thomas has been amazing, and I think he deserves, I don't know if your mic is working today, Thomas, but you deserve a huge applaud here and uh, lots of hugs for doing all that you do. And of course, this is all on a voluntary basis. We're all doing this. Uh, and then there's Helena, who's learning her way. Is Helena here? Helena, if you could just say hello. Uh, Helena uh, is learning to Moodle, but she's been very, very uh, special in how she uh, takes care of everyone and responds to everybody. There's all Others are also responding. Uh, is Nixon here? Uh, let's see. Other people are also responding really, really nicely, and I think that's wonderful. We do need to support one another because one or two people cannot do it, not even five. So the more you're able to support one another, the more you will learn, and this will be truly a community of learners, as Ludmilla mentioned last week. All right, so I see we've got our WizIQ trainer here, so if you have any problems, we have WizIQ support with us. Clap for WizIQ. 
for being here to support us so things go right because last week they didn't so uh, thank you for being here so i don't see helena um and i don't see let's see uh okay all right and of course nancy i mentioned ludmilla and myself okay and i never sleep but I work at a day job. People don't know this. Ludmilla too. Ludmilla has a day job. I have a day job. We, I go to work every day and teach monstrous kids. No, they're wonderful. But I do teach teenagers uh, that are very challenging and a lot of fun. All right, so we're going to be, uh, first of all, we're going to be using the star. So get your fingers ready to grab the star. Uh, we'll be talking about badges. Everybody wants a badge. How many of you got a badge? If you can give me a thumbs up if you got a badge. I didn't get a badge. <laughs> so um, if you got a badge, oh, we've got a badge. Marina, you got a badge? All you people got a badge? I never got confirmation that you got badges. Really? Okay, <laughs> maybe you don't know what we're talking about. All right, so you have a chance to get a badge for doing everything, and we'll talk about uh, why you didn't get a badge what's missing and how you can find out what's missing. We'll be talking about two kinds of uh, participation. One is viewing, if you want to get credit and a badge and a certificate. One is viewing, which means you have to read. And the other one is writing. Either you start a new discussion or you reply to somebody else. So it's reading or writing, one or the other. And there are checklists. Now these checklists are automatic. You cannot check, tick. A checklist it's automatic so uh, don't feel like it's not ticking for you it's not going to tick okay because it's automatic uh, Moodle has a tracking system I mentioned it last time and it's gonna tick for you when you do if you don't see a tick you have not done um, the task and we'll talk about resources Nancy's going to be doing that what are they and how to use them okay and Ludmilla will also uh, share how she uses um, resources all right so one at a time please raise your hand okay um i'm going to give nancy rights hi nancy i'm going to give ludmilla hello ludmilla and um anybody else here that um, has a mic okay what i'd like you to do is i'd like you to um raise your hand if you'd like me to give you the opportunity to go put a star next to um, where you are right now. Okay, so who would like to do that? Just raise your hand and I'll just pass on the um, writing tools to you. Who is brave? You have a slow connection. Well, it could be that we've got the... Um, the videos open so uh, Yolanda okay so just raise your hand the raised hand is at the top somewhere raised hand you'll see a hand and you just uh, click on it and oh I see we've got 15 raised hands oh okay here we go so uh, let's start with ooh okay there's one raised hand if you could go and um, Put a star next to i don't want to give everybody because if i do there are always curious people who want to do stuff and we can't let them because okay so very quickly put a star let's see if we can get one person uh putting a star there to where they are okay um there i've given it to wilson two people we're not going to give everybody because we've got 59 people right now. It's a bit much. There's Sheila. Give you a chance. Oh, I saw a star there, Venezuela. Okay. There's a star here on the side. There's a smiley, and you can get a star. Uh, let me put one for South Africa. Anybody from South Africa? There's South Africa. Uh, I can... Who is from, uh, we could do it for you, actually. If you could tell us where you're from. Holland. Who, where in the world is Holland? I have to really learn my, the map of Europe again. There is a big one. Star on Bangkok. 
Bangkok. Ladies, help. Ludmilla, where is Bangkok? I know my husband goes there all the time. Where is it? <laughs> stars, stars. I'll just put stars everywhere. And I'm sure one of them is you. <laughs> right? There we go. Isn't that beautiful? Look, we've got yeah. people. I think Thomas can do a marvelous job on this. We've got people from everywhere. You know, if we went through it, Australia's there, definitely. Uh, New Zealand. Africa, I'm not sure what countries in Africa. I know there's an India, all over India, actually. Uh, there's in Iran. Iran is somewhere here. All right, so uh, there it is. Okay, so um, we'll have to do this on Poodle, on the whiteboard on Poodle or somewhere. All right, so I think that we're ready to go. All right, so uh, lots of countries. And I need someone, actually, to... Um, Get a list of all the countries. If you're interested, yeah. maybe get uh, two or three people to um, find out where everybody's from, and then we can do a little bit of statistics. We'll talk about that. All right. So let's start with the most important aspect of um, the Moodle course, and that's the announcement. If you could add in the chat box, everybody, where is the announcement? Where can you find the announcement? Okay, I'm waiting to see. Announcement. A very small, that is why it's always missed. <laughs> Where is the announcement? Let's see if uh, you guys can focus. Announcement. Very good. Grace came in first. Who's second? Very good. Marina. Susan. Susan's one of these people that's really helping um, everyone get moving. Thank you for your support. Sheila, top right, top right, top right. Exactly. Top right. Now, I want you to follow that because everything's going to be there. Everything that you need to know. If you get lost, go to the announcements, top right. You'll get the latest news, the weekly tasks, and the live classes. Everything will be top right. And this is what it looks like. Now, it's either top right or it's in the... Where do you see this? Let's see if you can tell me. We're finished with the top right. It's right here, top right. I love this, right? It's right here, top right. Um, but where is this one? Where is it? Top middle. What's the top middle? Oh, top middle. Is Thomas right? In the middle block. Very good, Subha. Or that's pronounced differently. Shubha. I, I listen to your voice. You know, I think it's wonderful that you're using Poodle because it gives um, us a chance to learn how to pronounce your name. Yes, we are, Jeff. All right, so it's in the middle, top middle, as uh, Thomas said, or top right, as everybody else said. All right, this is what you'll see in the announcements, top right of the course. And you click always on the reddish-brown words. Why do you click on reddish-brown words? Okay, if you could just give me the answer. Why click on the reddish brown words? Why? Yes, that's right. They're links. They're hyperlinks. Now, if you click on the discussion, you'll go there. If you click on these names, you'll go there. If you click, click on the images, you'll go there. All right. Very, very intuitive. Now, what's this? This is the most, the second most important thing, if not the most important thing. Once you go through the announcements, Go to the tiny MC. What is a tiny MC? It's not tiny at all. I don't know why they call it tiny, but there must be uh, some reason for that. I didn't go into it. But what is a tiny MC? Editor. That's right. It's an editor and it's rich. So, what is a poor editor? <laughs> a poor editor means it doesn't have all the features that we want. You know, when I started with word word processors in the uh, mid '80s, uh, they didn't look like this. Okay, I didn't have very much. They didn't. We didn't have an editor. Okay, it was horrible. There was no such thing as uh, an editor. What you have here are really important. You have a text, and you can also work on your word document, and you can copy and paste. You have hyperlinked words. Number two is hyperlinked words. You have um, multimedia, 
Okay, there it is. That's the video and audio. You also, and that's where you get your poodle. Where do you get your poodle? If I want a recorder to record my voice or record my voice and face webcam, how do I get there? Thank you, Ludmilla. You can use that. That's better than if I use it because it's causing me problems. Yes, yeah, so Ludmilla, feel free to use your um, pointer. So where do I get poodle? Poodle to record my voice. No answers. People don't hear me. I lost my voice. No, my voice is still there. I hope Susan it's, has it. Yeah, I still, yeah, I can see the bar going. All right, they're thinking, 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 <laughs> number three. But that's where you get it. That's where you get your poodle. You click and you'll see poodle on the left. That's where you add YouTube videos. That's where you can connect through audio and video. And then you've got images. And you can resize them there, by the way. You don't need any kind of program. You can resize by going to advance and resize your uh, images. Okay, right there on the Moodle. Table. Try the table. Try these in your teacher practice area, and we'll talk about that. You also have the emoticons, emotions. And I want to add some more. I'm trying to uh, get that to work for me. Try to add some more. If you have some that you'd like me to add, send them to me and I'll add them. Okay, like the heart that Susan had. It's very nice. And number seven is really important. What is number seven? You won't have to have it in Moodle 2.6. In fact, Moodle 2.6 has a very different editor, which I don't like. Um, Number seven is really important because it enlarges and then minimizes, maximizes and minimizes the whole editor, okay, so that you can see what's going on there. All right, next, you've asked about how do I know if I finished or if I haven't finished my, um, my work for week one. And don't forget you go week at a time, okay, even though you're going all over the place but you should do things one week at a time, okay? So week one, if I wanna know what's going on, I go to complete report. I get this under activity reports in my profile. And everything is administration, so don't get scared if Moodle calls you an administrator, even if you're a student. So everything has administration, course administration, don't unenroll yourself by mistake. My profile settings, edit profile, but if you do, I'll bring you back and everything will be back. It doesn't get deleted, but I, I wouldn't do it for the fun. Imagine if a thousand people did it. A lot of work. Uh, and then edit profile, change password, blogs, badges. Notice the badges are here too. Pay attention to that. And then complete report. Go in there, take a look, don't be afraid. Explore. And this is what you get from the report. You get views and you get post. What does it mean if you have view? Is view important to you as a student, as a teacher? What does view tell you? Yes, it is. What does it tell you? What does view tell you? Hi, what does it tell you? Yes, it tells you that you have read it. So if you don't have view, read it, view it. Okay, so this is start the book. Read it. If you don't read it, if you don't view it, you don't get credited by uh, Moodle. It doesn't track you and you don't get the badge. So if you want to get the badge, you need to have announcements viewed. You see this little line here? This little line means that I'm not going to get my badge because I did not view the announcements. How many of you missed the announcements? Aha. Okay, how many of you know that you missed the announcement? Okay, so you need to do this. You see that little line there? You need to take care of it. Moodle experience, you need to do it in week one or you don't get a badge. Okay, same here, week one. Navigating the course, you need to view it. And there are other things you need to view. A lot of things you need to view. You need to view most of the tabs. The facilitator tab, the course tab, uh, course syllabus tab, the uh, live class tab. Okay, so view things, read them so you know what's going on. 
One of the problems of online learning, well, offline learning too, is that people don't read. We don't read. I'm guilty. Everybody's guilty. We don't read. And online, you have to read. If you don't read, you'll miss. And then you'll come up with suggestions. Nelly, do this. But I did. Okay. Where is it? I don't know anymore. Okay. So please read, 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 read. Uh, the badges and the uh, criteria for the badges are there not only for the badge, they're there to make you read. Okay, so this is a little bit of the badges. There are six badges. You'll find the image to the badge, description, criteria. So go into badge on your course, for the course. Go to badge under your profile and take a look at what's there. And this is what you'll find. Wow, isn't this a lot? A lot of reading. <clears throat> okay, so it's under badges. Everything is under badges. So read number one, criteria to get your badge for week one. Week two, three, and four are a lot less. Week one is a lot. So you have to read the news announcement, the start book resource, taking the Moodle experience choice activity, a support form. You have to read it. You don't have to write, just read. Uh, the navigation book, read it. The support forms for facilitators, course syllabus, and schedule live meetings. Read, just read. So you know what's going on. And then respond. Here you have to write. Number two is writing. So respond to the introduction form and every other form by starting a new discussion topic and responding to another participant. That's all. So how much is that? Read and respond to only one discussion form. That's not a lot, is it? Very simple. And then you have the same thing here. You have to do all of these. So notice all of these. Just look at it. It's right there on your navigation on the left under your name. All right. So um, week two, and I'm going to give the uh, wand to uh, Nancy our special guest. Uh, so Moodle navigation for week two. Okay, this was week one. And notice here, do you see the check marks? The first one you can make, but I'm going to remove that check mark. We don't need a check mark there. Um, the second one, these are automatic. You see the dotted ones? The dotted ones are automatic. You can't do anything unless if you get it dotted, it means you've done it. If you it's not dotted, it means you haven't done it. So do it. Okay, uh, and then you click on week two. So let's do it. Okay, let's start week two. Week two. Okay, this is the assignment for week two. You go into support. And what are you going to do on support? Are you going to respond if you don't want to? You've got nothing to say. You have no questions, no comments. You don't want to respond. Do you have to respond there? Yes or no? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Do you have to respond? No. How do you know, Jeff? Yes. How do you know yes, Gwen? No, Sheila? Yes, no, yes. Yeah. Wow, this is wonderful. I've never seen anything like that. Yes, no, yes, no. And the winner is? It says view. What does view mean? It means you just read. You don't have to. And if you don't have time, save your time. Okay, there's a lot of, not a lot of stuff to do unless you do it because you want to. All right, so for support, you just view it, you just read it. Just read it, and then you get a tick. Try it if you don't believe me. Next, the resource on Moodle. Here, do you just view it? Well, if you do, you won't get credit. So you need to start a new discussion and respond to another person. Now, notice what's here. Notice what's here. All the information you will get from the teacher practice area. Okay, so you have to go to the teacher practice area and click on the image. Click. And once you click and you go into the support, what's going to happen to this check checkbox? What's going to happen when you read the support? You'll get a tick. Exactly. Automatic. You can't tick it. It'll tick for you. That's what's wonderful about Moodle. People don't realize that Moodle is really big brother, not only watching you, but doing things for you, keeping an eye on you. All right. So um, 
this is the teacher practice area. Everybody's enrolled automatic, so you don't have to do anything. You just click. Click on the blue teacher practice area. Okay. That's where the C. Okay, this is what you will see. And this is huge. Okay, right now there are 370 topics for those who need a topic. So you'll have to see what topic is taken and what is not. First, you start with back to. You need to go back to the course. You click on back to the course as a student. Here you're all teachers. If you're not a teacher, Thomas and I will give you teacher rights. And then you click on how to get started. And then you scroll down the sea of topics. If you want to go back, you go here. Do you click on this? Ignore it. Ignore this area. It's mine. It's not yours. Stick to your topic. Okay? Ignore this. It's not yours. Stick to your topic. Okay? And this is what you do in the teacher practice area. All right? First thing. What's the first thing you do? This is a view only. What do you do? No, only if you want to, uh, Jordana. You don't have to write a blog. But it's good. It keeps us focused. There are good things about blogging, but exactly. Turn editing on. And where is turn editing on, everybody? Where is it? On the right. Can we put it on the left? Only if we customize. Okay, it's by default on the right. Okay, and then you grab a topic. How do you grab a topic? How do you grab anything on Moodle? You click. That's right. Very good. Excellent. You grab things by clicking. Now you're getting it. That's right. So you grab a topic. If it's not taken, you take it. If it's taken, you find another one. There are 370, so there are enough right now. If more people come in, the 1,040 whatever from um, with IQ will just um, add more. And then you open an activity or resource. Okay? And I showed you what that looks like, but don't grab mine. Only grab other yours, okay? Don't grab mine. Okay, so this is what it looks like. It's uh, it's right here, okay, but please don't take anybody's but yours, okay? That's the ad. You click there because it's brownish red. You click on anything brownish red and you can't get lost on Moodle, okay? So brownish red, and then you go into open an activity or resource, go to resources because week two is resources. Stick to what we're doing. Because if you go all over the place, you're responsible. You can do it, but don't say that this is too much, okay? Because we didn't make it too much. It's, you know, but we left it open so that you have a choice whether you want to go crazy or not. But uh, we'll help you in any case. So you go to resources for week two. You tick off label. How do you tick off? I'll show you in a minute. You tick it off, and Nancy will show you too. And then you write your name. Full name is best. You could also put a picture. Don't forget, every everything has an editor. Everything on Moodle has an editor. The label has an editor. All the activities, all the reasons, everything has a label. Every time you write something, you open it, it has a label. It has an editor, which is great. So editors allow you to put images, videos, um, text, whatever you want, okay, and audio. So you write your name and you can add multimedia if you want. Explore the resources. Create a support. Now, this is really important. Create a support form in your topic area so that we and others can ask you questions and learn from you and with you, of course, and we can support you. And then you go back to the course main area. Remember the go back? And then you have to respond to the discussion on resources in week two. And your response will be based on what you do in the teacher practice area. All right, just to show you what tick means, okay? Why is this called ticking and not clicking? Because there's a radio button. Do they still call them radio buttons? 
Great, Veronica. Wonderful, so Veronica. Everybody can go from where they are. Don't be overwhelmed by what other people are doing or asking. <laughs> okay, you do your work. Okay, uh, somebody said that there's a lot of information. That's right. There's a lot of information all around us. Life is full of information. But we, we have to pick and choose and and decide what works and when it works and how. Okay, so label. You tick it off and then you add. Don't forget to add. This is topic 42. I believe it's the one after um, your, your yawning. You must be really relaxed, Nancy. Now, I tell that to my students. If you yawn in my class, it means you're very relaxed. It's like yoga. You know, everybody yawns, you know, at the end of a yoga class because they're so relaxed. Okay, so here we are, and I'm going to let Nancy take over. So I'm going to yawn. Oh, I'm going to relax now. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, actually, I'm sleepy. <laughs> I haven't gotten much sleep the last couple of days either. I love working with Moodle resources. I'm crazy about the book and I'm crazy about the page, but we'll talk about a, a variety of these. And I just uh, post, posted in the week two support forum and in the week two, um, the other forum, the Moodle forum uh, on resources, a YouTube video that I finished as this course started. <laughs> I think I was posting, Nellie was saying hello while I was posting the link in the two forums, and it takes you through how to set up a book. Later on, after this course, I'll be doing um, a similar bunch of videos on file folder and page and uh, label. You all know how to do that. Um, so resources are books, files, folders, labels, page, URL, and IMS content package. And I confess I don't know what that is, so I hope Lamilla or Nellie can explain that. I tend to use myself mostly the book now that it's available and um, page. These are organizing tools that let you present your information in a variety of different ways as well as um, keep that, that course frame page a little bit clean. When I first started out working on Moodle, I loved to have that scroll. I loved to have as much as possible on the front page. It would take a very long time to load the course. I'd go all the way down to the bottom and have all my videos visible and all that stuff. But that's perceptually confusing. It's per confusing to the student in a perceptual way. It also makes it more difficult to load the page. It also puts in extra time to load the page. So now I've learned to use the resources and also the activities, but especially the resources as a way to organize um, the page that you see so that it's a little bit easier to see what you're doing. So these are the guys, book, file, folder, label, page, URL, and the IMS package. Now the first one that I wanted to talk about is book and the reason why I love the book is that there are so many different ways to use the book. It um, is not only a tool that can be used in a very sort of conventional way, which I do, I confess, as the course materials. So for instance, in some of my courses you'll see in my video, I come, you, the students will come in and they'll see a book that says course materials and they can click there and it's arranged according to the weeks of the course, giving the required reading or viewing and the required, uh, the suggested reading or viewing one after the other. One of the things that makes the book so powerful is that it has that Moodle flexible editing frame. And a flexible editing frame gives you so many options. I think I think Jeff and Suzanne, it, that's um, IMS brings in allows you to bring in other kinds of uh, programs into the course frame. But someone else can explain that. Anyway, back to the book. You can add videos, podcasts, text of all manner of lengths, uh, links to pages, links to um, uh, readings, whatever you want to add into the book. And because it's scrollable, and we've seen that in our own course, because the syllabus 
kind of the big organizational framework for the Moodle for Teachers course is a book. So you use it as a way to get information across and you can use it in a variety of different ways because of the of that editing frame, the flexibility of that editing frame. So this shows you a little bit about um, a little bit about what I've done. Uh, you will see that when you set up the book, and you would have seen this when you take a look at um, the syllabus book for Moodle for Teachers, you get a table of contents on the left-hand side, and that shows you all the chapters in the book. And you have that front page that allows you to define the book and give the student an idea of what they're going to be seeing in the, in, in the class or what they're going to be seeing in the book itself. So here's your table of contents. And then over here are those wonderful navigation guides that let you go to the left or to the right. And you can go work through. This is a page from a course that I uh, did some time ago in which I used the book just as the place where all the assigned and suggested readings were. And because of the flexibility of that editing frame, I also could add videos and podcasts and other kinds of things. So students could go in for week one and see what they needed to learn, and then they could move on. I'm sorry these slides got so wonky. Um, let me go on to the next one. And then this is ours, as you know, from <laughs> Moodle for Teachers. So you've got the table of contents again on the left-hand side, which shows you what's in each one of the sections. You don't need to use the dates. You, do, you can set up any kind of, of um, uh, course, uh, any kind of course relevant title for these sections. Like for instance, if you were teaching English as a second language and you wanted to have specific resources on specific parts of speech, you could name your sections adverb, verb, noun, um, object, whatever you wanted to do. If you had a content course that dealt with, say, psychology, you could have these sections set up in that way. Or art different periods in art, history, different times in history. So whatever you want to name those different sections, you can name them. And you can use those pages in any way that you want. And what Nelly has done is use the pages to give you that click off, that wonderful little button that you can click on that will take you through to more information, specific information. So it's a wonderful, wonderful organizational tool. I have a, had a colleague at um, a college that I used to uh, be an administrator of who used the um, book resource to set up tools for clinical uh, psychologists. So each page was a particular type of technique and then the references for the techniques. So it's really, really flexible. The next one um, that I find super usable as an organizational tool is the page. What this does is it adds a new page to your uh, Moodle framework and you can do anything with that page that you would do with a web page. So for instance you could set up a page on a particular topic or a particular technique and actually structure it in the way you might have struct structured the module for that week. So if you don't want a lot of information on the course page, on that classroom page, but you want it organized together so the student is getting everything they need for a particular thing, you can use the page resource. And I have a couple of examples. Whoops. What happened in my example? Let's see if it moved somewhere. can tell you about it, but let, let me see where it went. It seems to have disappeared altogether. Okay. Well, I'm not sure why that happened. Um, in the in the pages, what I've done, for instance, is I I use um, between a page and a book chapter. A book chapter has a very defined physical frame, so it's not really, really large. You can expand it if you want to, if you want to have that that kind of a, um, if you want to have a really long book book 
book page. But I find actually that using the resource called page is a little easier because you get what looks like a web page. So it's really a different part of the course. It's standalone. You can come back just to that one thing without having to click on book and then find the chapter and then find what you're interested in. The book is great when you want a student to kind of navigate through in a lateral way. You know, here's week one, here's week two, here's topic one, here's topic two. If you want to put a page in, normally what I do is make that a page, um, make that a standalone. So, for instance, course that I've taught, um, I have gone from we do everything on WizIQ and we use the Moodle as a repository for the materials with a discussion session that's just specific to a particular week. So I'll set up a page and on the page it will have the link to the PowerPoint, the link to the recording on WizIQ, and then the discussion forum and then possibly an area where there are tutorials for the assignment, the assignment, a quiz, so you can just set up this kind of structure of the class in the page. So it's standalone. You just come to that and it's standalone. So that's one of the things that I like to do. But you can do anything because of the flexibility of the editing tool. In a label, I always think of a label as a I was well, I had done a slide that had an example and I don't know where the slide went. Um, it's not here. But I will put up uh, examples in the page video that I will upload a little bit later to the classroom. Um, the label, I tend to use the label as a way to structure the actual classroom page. So for instance, if I want to separate out the section of the module that has my welcome to the week video and then has um, the, the readings that the student needs to read, I will put a label in that just has a divider and I can you can use a line or you can get a nice piece of free artwork or some artwork that you might have um, purchased for use and just pop that into a label so you load up an image in the label and there it is and it separates out the first section of the module from the second section and that way you get some nice spacing inside of that module on your WizIQ classroom page. So that's how I use it. I also use it to put in notes or a new reference or a reminder or something else. And that's what I use it for. A portfolio is a, is a different, um, you can set up a portfolio inside of uh, WizIQ, but there are other types of software that allow you to do portfolios. So we're going to stick to resources at the moment. Now the other resources are file, URL, and folder. File and URL are simply a way to get an individual file onto the classroom page or into something else. For instance, if you're inside of a book and you want to just have a file link, you can click on add, add, um, you can put that file link there. If you're on a page, you can put the file link there. But if you're on that front page of the classroom itself, a great way to get one link in there, just one file, is to use file. And that's the same as URL. And the URL description gives you some other options on how to add in links to other materials to your classroom page. I tend to use folders. And I use folders because I will typically put a up in my classroom two or three articles that I want the person to read or two or three web pages that I would like them to go to. So if you set up a folder, now you have a space that you can put in a multiple links, two or three links, and the person has it. Different for the, from the book again, because in the book, this is something that I think of as a more global resource, doesn't have to be. But on the global resource, um, might be the course materials, you go page by page and take a look at them. If inside an individual module, you want a person to be able to click off, yes, 
click off to see a file, upload a PDF, read it, go to a web page, you can put that in a folder. So I will have a folder that says additional resources for week one. This is not material that I want to put into the course materials book, but something for people that are really enthusiastic and want to move on. And then I can put a then I can put a note there telling people what to do, telling people this is not required, this is just for enthusiastic people who want to read more and you can use this folder. Folders are also a good way of organizing um, <laughs> I usually talk really really fast <laughs> Alina so um, I hope I can get slower um, I lost where I was. Let me think. Oh, I use folders when I am trying to keep a set of materials for myself, available for myself. So I'll set up a folder and take that option of hiding the folder from the students. Then I can put information or links or things that I'm interested in finding quickly and easily into that folder but the folder is only visible to me so that's one way that I do things. I also used to do a lot of tutorials and put them at the very bottom of the class page and I would call that section I would make an extra topic and I would call that section skill tutorials for Moodle but some of the students found it difficult to scroll down and then see 10 videos at the bottom and have to try and find the video that I wanted them to see. So now what I've been doing in my courses is setting up a folder called Skills Tutorials so there's a separate page that they can look at. I'm actually going to switch I think to the book um, situation because the table of contents will make it in um, more e make it easier for the student to find the particular tutorial. You can hide anything in the classroom frame from the students for different reasons. Any any of the activities or resources can be hidden or they can be visible. Uh, one method that people sometimes use in designing courses is to leave the modules that haven't happened yet, the weeks that are on the horizon but have not happened, and they'll hide the weeks that haven't happened, open up week two when week one is, is finished. Some people will take quizzes or certain resources or things that they don't want the student to move ahead to. For instance, if you're teaching student skills, you really might want them to finish something first before they move to the next thing so you will hide the next thing but then hiding is also very useful for the teacher because you can hide materials that you need notes that you need to uh, remind yourself about um, videos that you want to highlight later on in the classroom in a folder that's just for you so that's a that's another organizational tool that gives you a background as a teacher. It's not in the foreground for the students, it's in the background for the teacher. Anyway, I will be putting um, tutorials on file page uh, URL and folder up in week two later on today. I'm going to work on those after um, after this live class is over. The book tutorial is already there. And I think that's all because my examples were taken out. I think the last one is thank you. Yes. Yay. So um, let me take a look at the. Yeah. Well, we want to. Sorry. What we want to. Oh, uh, thank you for putting in more information of, about IMS. I do that's is we not wanna, something that I use. Sorry, Nancy. If anybody has any other questions about this, I'll be in the discussion forum and the tutorials will be there. So Nancy, that's that. Can you hear me? Am I being heard? Yes. Okay, great. What I wanted yes. to do was people are asking Hi. for screening, screenshots. So what I thought we would do, we would go into um, into the later, uh, go into the site and do a bit of screen sharing because they, they find that that's um, uh, easier for them, for some.
to uh, view things. So I'm going to try to, uh, I don't know if you can hear me right now because the sound is probably. Yes, yes. Oh, you can because no, I, I can everything is frozen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Because I'm screen sharing, a lot of stuff is, uh, is frozen right now. So um, that's how it works. It freezes. I hope it's, yeah. it's going to work because it wants me to update. It's... And when it wants me to update and I don't update it, it gets upset. So I don't think I'm going to be able to screen share. Can you do it, Nancy? Are you able to screen share? Because um, uh, I don't know. I haven't done it in a long time. No, it works. Um, it works. It's just that I need to. Um, well, actually, it's it's grayed out for me. Oh yeah, because I'm using Whoop, it. There it comes. Yeah, it should be back to oh, you. Oh okay. Okay, because I just removed it. Yes. Do you want to screen share? Are you okay. sure you want to? Yes. Uh, what? Uh, where should I go take to us? the site to the Moodle site? Okay. Uh, I'm going to have to... Um, I think I have it open in the background. Yeah, just go into it. But first you have to start the screen sharing. Um, yeah, I see yeah. it coming up now. Uh, can you see the screen? Not yet. But it takes time. It's Depending on your connection, it'll um, take as long oh, as it takes. Yeah. So, I have uh, in incredibly slow... Maybe Ludmilla can do this because I have an incredibly slow, oh, okay. it's almost as bad as dial-up. All right, so Ludmilla, can you... Well, uh, okay, so stop your screen sharing and Ludmilla can do yeah, it. Yeah, I just... Okay, I just closed my screen sharing. I just lost everybody's names. Oh, it's back. It's probably down. Okay. There you go. Ludmilla, can you go into the website? And then you can continue yeah, talking about... Resources. Out in the woods here, it's very, very slow. With Mila, are you managing? If not, I can try again. Going now. No, we haven't started yet. Oh. Have you started? I think he says something. Not yet. Oh. Do you see anything? No, because I haven't seen you start. You know, they say that uh, it's better if we... Um, no, we haven't started screen sharing yet. It's better if we get our videos off, but I I've, I never do that. Okay. The only problem, oh. what I hate is Java. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I see the word Java, uh, my Mac goes, yick. I don't know why. Macs do not like Java. <laughs> and they don't like Flash, but especially... Um, so, Ludmilla, just tell me if you're able to. If not, then um, I don't know if we're going to have time. Maybe you can do well not to worry because I'll have lots of examples. I have examples in the in the book resource, and I'll have more in the no. Look, I I I I shared things from my stuff that I'm working on privately, and also from Moodle for Teachers. No, 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 Susan. Java doesn't affect Wiz IQ classes. Hello. It only affects the screen sharing. Are there any questions while Ludmilla is trying to uh, get the screen share? You need to have Java for the screen sharing right now. But WizIQ is working, as far as I know, on another system so that we're not dependent on Java. You know, Java means coffee, doesn't it? We're trying to show you some examples. But that's of these okay. Do you see anything? Do you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Ludmilla, but, but we don't see anything initializing on your end. Yeah, All right, so feel free. Show the what I want to suggest to everybody is I can use the, uh, oh, here it is. Uh, because you're trying to screen share my, uh, the chat's going weird. Let me let's just stop it. We only have about six minutes anyway, so I don't think it's going to be. Are you still on the job? Yeah, there'll be examples in the video. Yeah, DDA. breaking. Yeah, get rid of it. <laughs> Support. The, the sound is breaking. Yeah. Because of the Java, you can't do both. All right, so please, um, Java is not part of WizIQ, by the way. This is an external um, screen sharing apparatus that's been added, but it's it's a third party. So use the support forms. If you write in the wrong support form, don't worry about it. I'll move you. Okay, <laughs> so if you don't know where to ask your question, and that happens a lot, feel free to ask your question okay. anywhere, and I'll just move it. And Thomas and I have been moving lots of uh, discussions wow. because they were in the wrong place. All right, so um, move you. Yeah, I'll move you. Don't worry. So feel comfortable. Don't feel like you're making a mistake or you're doing anything wrong because you can't. Unlike life, 
uh, you can't really uh, make mistakes on Moodle because you can always delete. And we can't really delete things in life. All right, so I'd like to thank um, everybody. We'll go to the last slide here. Um, Nancy, can you make it go to the last one? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Because <laughs> no, cause we're both yep. holding on. And I'd like to thank yep. you. We'd like to thank you in every single language. If you can read your language and say thank you in that language, please add it in the chat box. Okay, how you say thank you in, um, in your language. So thank you so much, everybody.